Well, hello, Paul. It's so nice to see you. Here we are Zooming with the new way of business now, right? Yeah. Well, uh, let me just real quick introduce myself. This is Pat Burns. I'm the film reviewer and journalist, celebrity journalist for the online magazine, Grand Magazine, which of course you won't know because you're watching this. Um, but today I'm really happy to be introducing a gentleman that I met several years ago uh, when I reviewed his really informative and insightful documentary called Slingshot. So uh, that's that's how far back we go, Paul. But right now it's my pleasure to introduce Paul Lazarus and Paul is a film director. And I um, was saw his recent post on Facebook because I do follow him. I uh, love your work um, about a project that you're doing. And um, but before we get into that, give our readers and our listeners just a quick rundown of some of your work. My work. Okay. Well, I went to Dartmouth College, and then after that, I was a young apprentice with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm. And uh, after that, I spent about ten years in New York directing theater, practically every theater in New York. Wow. And then uh, I came to LA, and I've been directing TV and film, and uh, keeping my hand in the theater a, a bit. I was artistic director of the Pasadena Playhouse for a few years. And uh, did you say Pasadena? Pasadena play. Yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. And um, and I've directed about 40 TV series at this point. Uh, many of them, um, I guess, have been watched by a bunch of people like Friends and Everybody Loves Raymond and recently Pretty Little Liars and The Middle. And uh, uh, I've enjoyed that, but um, mostly been doing a lot of writing lately. And mm -hmm. one of the projects was this translation of 10 short stories by this very noted Russian author named Alexander Sipkin. And uh, he's very, very famous in Russia. You know, I, I would say he's the Aaron Sorkin of Moscow. Maybe. Wow. <laughs> uh, he's very, very famous, but in America, nobody knows him because his work hasn't been translated in English. So for the last year, I have been translating his stories one at a time. And we finally decided uh, since we had 10 of them that we would put them out in a kind of spoken word album. So I called a bunch of friends, including Stacy Keach and Jason Alexander and Vanessa Williams and uh, Aunt, uh, Noah Wiley and on and on and on and uh, ten, 10 actors of that kind of caliber. And they each recorded a single story. And uh, we've now, we've just recently released it. And uh, it's very exciting because Alexander is not known in America, but he's a uh, extremely gifted writer, and uh, you know, I, I have. I, he, he's a very twist-oriented writer, so you're reading each of his stories, and then there's always a kind of big surprise that you didn't see coming, kind of like O. Henry, or or uh, sure, you know. I mean, you know, it's it's always dangerous to uh, com compare a young writer to someone as famous as O. Henry, but uh, I have to say, when I read his Christmas story, which we retitled. Santa Claus number two, two yeah. <laughs> um, because we wanted to make sure that people knew it was a Christmas story. It was originally called I Won't Tell in Russian. The, the literal translation is Neskazat, so I Won't Tell. It's focused is on the daughter who won't tell about her what she wrote to Santa Claus. Um, and in Russia, they don't actually celebrate Christmas the way we do. Actually, their Christmas is January 7th. It's after the new year. Mm -hmm. their, their new year is kind of uh, equivalent to our Christmas. And their Christmas is um, not as big a deal as, as our Christmas, uh, strangely enough. But so I, when, I when I translated the story, I actually made what was a New Year's story, a Christmas story. Oh. Because, because in their New Year's, they exchange gifts like we do on Christmas. So I thought, no, nah, we can't, I can't say it's a New Year's story because nobody in America will understand why is it about gifts on New Year's? Mm -hmm. So I, I uh, took a little liberty and, and uh, with uh, Sasha, we call him Sasha, with Sasha's permission, I uh, changed it to Christmas. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because I did listen to that one uh, and I'm in the process of listening to all of them, but Noah Wiley did a great job with the voices, he, his inflections, oh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. his, you know, his child voice, his adult voice without being campy. You know, it was genuine. Like I was like, "Wow!" I was really impressed. Noah's a phenomenally gifted character actor. 
contained in a leading man's body. I mean, he, mm. uh, and I've always known that about him. And I was very fortunate. I got to direct him in a play um, called The 24th Day. And uh, he and Pete Berg did this two handed play. And uh, ever since then, I've known that he is an extraordinarily gifted character actor. And uh, I was delighted because there, as the title suggests, there are two Santa Clauses in this story and only Noah could make both Santa Claus's New York based, <laughs> but have them be different. Oh. And, 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 uh, and he did probably what is such a, and, I, and I, I can't claim this is my idea. It was totally Noah's idea, but he made one of the direct, uh, Santa Claus's blue collar. And mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's love, uh, blue collar in the cliche sense, I guess, but blue collar uh, Santa Claus, you know, kind of Santa Claus is a New York cabbie. And um, it was great fun. And, uh, and you're right, not campy, very specific mm -hmm. and very keenly observed without uh, resorting to cliche. And that's pretty impressive, uh, especially for someone who's known as the heartthrob of ER. Right. Uh, he can do anything. And, and he's really, really gifted. I, I, one of my favorite people too. He's a lovely guy. Oh, that's nice. Now, on the piece that was featured in uh, NBC New York Channel 4, there was the blonde Broadway yes. actress. Tell me a little yes, bit sir. about her. Uh, Nan that's Nancy Opal. And uh, Nancy is one of those working actors who's not famous yet. Right. Not, not, not worldwide famous, not like a Noah Wiley. And it's because she's been in 20, I believe it's 26 Broadway shows but not had a big TV starring role where the public would know her. I'm very fortunate in that I got to work with her as early as I think it goes back to, yeah, I know it goes back to 1983. So I've known about her uh, since the early eighties. Uh, she's also an incredibly salty down to earth person. And, but, but you would be astonished if I just listed just some of her credits. Like she recently played Madame Morrible in Wicked uh, she didn't originate the role, but she took over. And she originated roles in several Stephen Sondheim musicals. She was the original maid or housekeeper in Sunday in the Park with George. Mm -hmm. She played Evita on Broadway. I mean, she, this is a, a, a woman who's been literally, I think it's 26. I'm not sure of that number, so you'll forgive me. It's either 23 or 26, but once you pass 20 Broadway roles, right. I think- You're a legend. Really matter. Yeah, she, <laughs> so, so Nancy, who is, you know, probably uh, late 50s, early 60s, I hope she'll forgive me for saying that, but um, she is, you know, a, a rock star. She is a major, major Broadway performer. The energy that that takes, Oy. Yeah, and she does it eight, she's out there eight times a week. And right. uh, anyway, she was very gracious about uh, filming this piece with Mark Santia. And uh, uh, I, I love, and I, I hope it's uh, gonna give her a little notoriety because she's so well-deserved. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna ask some technical questions. Like, so you translated this from these stories uh, from Russian, where did you learn Russian? Okay, so uh, I, I'm learning Russian because I want to, and I've been to Moscow four times now. I'm very lucky in that Sasha will give me a literal translation of his work. So I'm actually working from English. To, but the, I see. But the, so I, I can't claim to be reading the Russian and, and doing that okay. kind of translation. But, but his uh, rough translations are not readable for, the, for, for an American or an English person. They're really, really rough. But it gives me an idea of what he means in the Russian. And frankly, I actually like the fact that he is forced to tell me what he means because for the sure. most part, I can get it. And then when I can't, I can ask him. So, nice. uh, and, and, it, and it happens, it happens about once a story where I look at it and just go, wait a minute, I don't even know what this means. And what I've discovered is there are some cultural things uh, about Russia and America that just don't translate. Mm -hmm. they're, they're Always, are, yeah. Yeah, there are things like uh, they have a very um, defined vision of heaven and hell, for example, that we just don't uh, employ in America. We just don't see it that way. Uh, 
there it's i guess it's a mystical layer a cultural mystical layer but anyway every time he gets into that in a story i get lost and then i realized it's the reason i'm getting lost is not because of translation it's because we just don't even have that sure. concept so so okay and then also because um you know i'm a i'm a fairly creative guy i i kind of like to especially when i see where he's going i sometimes will add a little more spice where he's made a very subtle spice. A, an example would be the story you know, um, the Santa Claus story. The wife is kind of the villain in that story. Yeah. Well, once, yeah, not kind of, she is the villain. Definitely. Uh, yeah, and well, and what I was able to do was once I decided that, I decided maybe it's a little too subtle. So I'll make mm -hmm. it, I'll make it a little more pronounced. So I, I took a little bit of liberty and added a few English words. Uh, I won't spoil it, but but I made her even more of a you know a B word <laughs> than she was in the original uh, story. Let's say that's exciting uh, so I, to hear. Yeah, and I'm I'm able to do that because I see where he's heading. Sure. And also, some things happen in translation that that you're that surprised right. me. Right. One of them was he said a park, but once it became English, it, it, it went from Moscow to New York, and then this park became Central Park. Well, once it's Central Park, things can happen that are not quite the same thing as a general park. So for example, uh, I don't think I'm, no, I gotta be careful. I don't wanna spoil the story, but I was able to make a character a Juilliard student instead of just a indistinguishable character. And by doing that, that allowed me to, to make a change in the story it was quite profound. And, uh, and yet subtle. And subtle. And, yeah. and it's that kind of thing. It's, that's the fun of translation, yeah. that occasionally you bump into a surprise that you didn't even see coming. Well, I love that you're giving some inside stories like that. This is going to be really fun to, to, Paul, to, you know, to draw people in to listen to this. You know, there's some really inside scoop. I love it. Yeah, um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, yeah, uh, for those listening, you know, really, uh, when you talk about Noah Wiley, Drew Hill, um, Jason Alexander, Nancy. Opal. Opal, thank you. That I can have this close connection, enjoy a fabulous story, listen to a great voice for a dollar. Right. Yeah. I mean. We kept it very inexpensive. Shut the front door. <laughs> a dollar. <laughs> Oh and my I, gosh! I think, and and you can have all ten of them for ten dollars. I think. <laughs> so, so, I mean, come on! I drove through, I drove through Starbucks and got a you know a grande chai tea latte, and it was like seven dollars. And I thought I can listen to seven stories for this, right? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> it's a phenomenal deal. So, and, and kudos Stacey keeps for a half hour for a dollar. I know it's amazing. <laughs> And the really, and and you are so, I was, let me speak personally, and I think everyone will be, I was drawn in. I mean, they draw you in. The story, as you said, beautifully written, beautifully written. But the reading was such talent, you know, they just kept drawing me in, drawing me in, drawing me oh, in. I'm so glad know? to hear that. You know, I don't think I would have ever gotten this cast together if not for the pandemic. You know, they're all at home. I, I um, yeah. Yep. And I had to send them microphones yep. because, you know, we couldn't yep. even go to a studio. Uh, we did this all yeah. in-house. They stood and spoke into blankets <laughs> you know, <laughs> to deaden the sound. And, uh, but it, the, the talent is, is just amazing. I mean, we didn't even mention Rachel Dratch, Tim Daly, Danny Burstein. These, these are all, uh, I've been very fortunate in my career that I've been, I've crossed paths with many, many terrific actors. And uh, so, but this, and Michael Urey, we didn't, uh, who just played uh, Harvey Firestein role in Torch Song Trilogy on Broadway. I mean, this is a very gifted young actor. I met him on a TV show called Ugly Betty, which is probably how most people know him. He was Vanessa Williams' assistant. Vanessa Williams is also on this in this group. Right, right. But uh, <clears throat> I, I very rarely, as a director, get my top pick uh, for any role. In this project, all 10 actors said yes. <laughs> well, and Paul, yes, 
it, it, the pandemic, but it's also a chance to work with you. You do great work, Paul. Anybody would be proud to be associated with your work. So right. yeah. And I, I'm going to just ask uh, one more question, but first, uh, I know that people are reading, hearing this because of the article, but a bit, someone may just forward this without the article. So I want to make sure that we let people know where they go to buy it, right. buy the one one reading or all ten for ten. G give us that oh, that website and and uh, the process to get to be able to um, acquire the readings. Thank you. Uh, the website is very simple. It's www.sipkinstories.com. And Sipkin, which isn't so easy, is spelled T-S-Y-P-K-I-N. So sipkinstories.com. T-S-Y-P-K-I-N stories.com. And uh, I think all you do, uh, with the help of my uh, assistant, Anthony, I think all you do is you go to the website and you pick what you want and it checks you out like normal yeah. online purchase. And I think it takes a credit card and that's it. Um, and, uh, or PayPal or whatever. And uh, I have to say, as you said before, it's quite a deal. And, and the other thing is, it was really an attempt to introduce a very gifted uh, unknown writer uh, to the American market because Alexander, who literally is on, on uh, billboards in, the, in our bot street, which is, let's say, Fifth Avenue equivalent, he's, he's that famous in Russia, but he's unfortunately not yet known in America, but I'm hoping that we will uh, make a dent with this. That's awesome. So again, everybody, uh, you want to go to www.tsypkin. Stipkinstories.com, correct? Correct. Okay. So um, last question, and then we'll wrap it up. You know, what have you done uh, to really to keep creative during the pandemic, other than this project? Well, I, I would do it, as I said, I've been doing a lot of writing, and uh, we made a short after Slingshot. I made this short about. Uh, uh, I, I've been doing mostly projects that I per have a personal connection with. Uh, that's been meaningful to me. Maybe you just get to a certain place in your, in your life and you don't uh, want to make uh, anything but things you think are meaningful. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had, uh, I've had several dogs in my life and uh, I made a short movie about dealing with, uh, unfortunately, the most difficult aspect of, of owning a dog, which is the end of the dog's life. And unfortunately for me, all three dogs uh, that I've owned have required to be put down. And, uh, which I don't wish on anyone, but I did make this little movie, which I call Graham, a dog story um, to help people with that just incredibly challenging act of playing God. And uh, so uh, um, that, that was recent. And then the co-writer of that project is a, a, a guy I write a lot with named Phil Olson. And we decided we had both lost parents in um, <clears throat> the previous year. I lost my father and he'd lost his father. So we decided to write a short movie about dealing with that. And uh, uh, we, tr we, st we tend to start with something quite serious like that, but we try to make it an entertainment because we want people first and foremost to be entertained, but we also want it to be meaningful. So we, we started to write this story that we ended up calling Living Room. And uh, <laughs> Uh, with all the double entendre that that con conveys. And it's basically about a son having a final conversation with his previously deceased parent, his father. So it's like, it's the conversation you wish you had had. Oh. But, but um, that's kind of was the crux of it. But we decided that that wasn't uh, clever enough. So we, put a, so we put a twist in and I can't give it away because it'll give away the whole short movie, but there's a very, very surprising moment in the movie uh, at the end when you find out who's alive and who's dead. Um, um, uh, so we ended up writing that and because of the pandemic I haven't been able to shoot it yet because we can't get a crew in a room together. Right. But that's on, that's on the dock, docket. And then with the same writer, Phil Olson, we have hatched a animated feature, which we're working on. And I'll, I'll just tell you one thing, the title, and it'll, 
pretty much give it all away. It's called Paula Bunyan. Say it again. Paula Bunyan. Okay. <laughs> Which pretty much tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> uh, and it's about, it's about Paul Bunyan's twin sister, Paula. <laughs> and uh, by 14 seconds, she points out. Um, oh my gosh. Well, you've got to keep me updated on that, on both of <laughs> yeah, us. We're, you know? we're hoping that that one's going to turn into a very big movie. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're I hope take, so too. Thank you. We're going to take it, but it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, but it's, it's very much from scratch. And, uh, and meanwhile, I'm, I'm uh, trying to uh, raise a 14-year-old daughter who's very unhappy to be stuck at home in this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I've got grandkids that age, so I get it. You get it. And they're just, you know, it's such a tough time. Yeah. And uh, trying to keep from being too depressed by the current state of our, our country. Well, let's, 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 let, let's listen to some good stories that got hatched in Moscow, but brought here via Paul Lazarus. So again, real quick, uh, let's let people know one more time. The 10 stories, a dollar each, or all 10 for all 10 for ten dollars. Yeah, I think and, I, I just just to be absolutely honest, I think it's a dollar twenty-nine each. Oh yeah, by the time there was some tax or there was something, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and that's it's right. Like but but you can get all 10 for $9.99. So there it's you pretty, go. So it's it is a dollar <laughs> each. And um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's sipkinstories.com. And the tricky part is Sipkin which is T-S-Y-P-K-I-N, sipkinstories.com. And if you go there, uh, you can have access to it. And we even, we even made a little book, so we're, you could even oh, get them. Awesome. One, what, you know, what's interesting with short stories, people love hearing the actors read it, and then some people don't want to hear an actor read it. They want to okay. use their own imagination and put That's their- That's a good point. They want to put their own voice. So we purposefully, offer the recorded ones, because I think they're pretty terrific, but we also have the texts without the voices if you don't want to hear Noah Wiley's version of Se Santa Claus number two, you can read it yourself as I, and, and that's reading my text that I created from Alexander's original that's great. text. Well, Paul, thank you so much. We want to, we're going to wrap up and I'm going to stop the recording and then um, uh, talk to you for just a moment. Sure. And if you just want to say goodbye to our listeners and our viewers and goodbye everyone. I hope, I hope you get to hear it and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.